My name is Yvonne Riley. I work at Sunshine College and I'm an educational leader in charge of maths and numeracy. We have a really specific maths programme at Sunshine College. It's made up of four distinct aspects. So there's the differentiated content lesson. And we also do a reciprocal teaching lesson, scaffolding numeracy lessons and speedy maths lessons to make up the entire programme. When I first started working at the college, I wasn't having any success in my classes. The kids were really struggling with the textbook that they had. So luckily, I was in a class back to back with Jodie and we started having a conversation about what was going on in her class, what was going on in my class and what we could do about it. We weren't differentiating things right away. We were just trialling what people would call them open-ended tasks, but we were never very satisfied with open-ended tasks because we quite like the success of completing something in its entirety. Not there are always been steps to go that you never get to complete. And that's when we started really thinking, well, if, if we take this task, how could we make it into discrete, finishable, achievable, successful tasks that you just, if you're doing the right one, then you're going to have success in that lesson and you're going to finish the task. The differentiated content lesson is just a, a lesson where we determine the range of knowledge that's required. Uh, and then we develop tasks at a number of levels to take into the class. It's a minimum of three levels, but lots of our activities have more than three levels. This program came about because of the need to improve our outcomes for students. Um, the precursor to the NAPLAN results was the AIM data here in Victoria. And we looked carefully at those and we knew that we needed to address the low outcomes for our students. And I was lucky enough to have two um, teachers come to me and say they would like to try something new. So I gave them the go ahead to start a new approach at the end of 2009 then it was decided that all of the campuses were going to use this method. So that's when it started, you know, we really had to start investing time and money in, you know, PD and people and, and getting the planning right for that because there was a lot, there was a lot to do at that point. Every maths lesson, we have the kids come in and take note of the learning intention on the board and actually write it in the book. Once that's occurred, we like to run a warm up. The purpose of the warm up is really pure engagement. A quick warm up today we're just going to play the largest number so you and your partner roll the dice if you like the number you keep it if you don't like the number they have to take it <laughs> when we're doing the student activity the students always have a choice of what level they want to participate in so we train the students to make a good choice for themselves Today's lesson is all about pattern building. There are three different patterns to choose from. You pick the pattern that is most suitable for your understanding. On top of the pattern, there are also four choices of what you can do once you've figured out the pattern. So the more confident and comfortable you are with using the linear equations in algebra, the higher up you go in these uh, levels. Once the students have got an activity, we have to guide the learning and make sure that they are learning by asking them questions. Everything we do in maths is about asking questions. We determine what their prior knowledge is through questioning and then we take them to the next level through questioning. The lesson is, here is the activity and I'll teach you when you need me to teach you. The pattern is often a key into the rule. So what was your pattern again? Um, plus three. Three is often in the rule. Yeah. So what how can we make four from one? Oh, oh you, you times three by the top number and you add it by one. Like this yeah. one, yeah. three times one equals three. And then the point of need is, I've gotten this far on my own, now I'm stuck. Now what do I do? And they can ask the students around about them and every lesson, every activity we have, the students are obliged to work together. It's really important for your maths understanding that you can articulate your maths. and. It's really powerful to learn it if you have had to justify your thinking. And remember, this is a bridge that this train is going to be travelling across. Can you have that as your second turn? No. Why not? Because you can't. It doesn't make any further distance. We also track the NAPLAN data. It's really important for us that the students who are at the school between year seven and year nine show shift in NAPLAN. And we don't use it to inform what we're going to teach in the classroom. We use it to track that what we're doing is actually being effective. We've quite clear and very hard data that, that tells us that we are having a big impact. Our improvement for students who are in the school from year seven to nine is faster than the improvement of an average student. 
We need to be wrapping this up. Can we be writing a reflection? So you need to finish your graph and written a reflection on what we have learned today. So did you learn to do anything better? At the end of the activity, they'll ask the students to reflect on their learning, which is by far and large the hardest thing we ask the students to do. Actually reflecting on your learning is a really high order skill and it's not something the students find easy to do. So we get them through that and then that's the end of the lesson. That's good. I like that. Look at the terms. Well done. Yes. And, um... Oh! Yes. Good. You're the only person to write variable. Nice. Well done.